All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to Counterculture Ketchup. Uh, my name is Joel. To my left is my bodacious brother, <laughs> and our perceptive pastor is over there, Jamie. Uh, together, we want to motivate the church to influence the culture with the kingdom of God by applying a biblical worldview to every single topic that we address. Amen. And uh, we'd like to ask you to subscribe to our Freedom Church NJ YouTube channel and wherever you listen to uh, podcasts. That'd be great. We'd also like to invite you to leave a review on any podcast app to help more people see our channel. Leave a comment, and if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss, get involved in the, the discussion, that'd be great. And uh, also, we have a couple peop- a couple sponsors. One. Well, one sponsor. We did lose one. She moved. <laughs> um, but uh, we do have one. Exactly. We're doing um, Friends of Today's, cho- or, uh, Today's Choice um, is a women's resource center in Newton, New Jersey, and we would like to encourage you to go to their website, friendsoftodayschoice.org, and make a donation to help. They help a lot of women in crisis pregnancies or even after the pregnancy, uh, after the, uh, the baby's born, hopefully. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. And uh, they, uh, provide, they provide diapers and clothes and, and really try to help out mm-hmm. a lot. They do a lot of really good work. So go to friendsoftodayschoice.org and uh donate yeah all right awesome so we got a special yeah we do podcast tonight first of all we have a special yes we guest, do yeah a bodacious we only bring brother him on for like the easy topics to he's discuss. Not, he's not bodacious to me for me <laughs> but for joey is it? I, I mean, but he is a brother it's a great it's a great word a though it, it, it is. actually is it's very yeah. i think it's exactly true for what tim is somebody who's bold and yes. simultaneously audacious and admirable I mean, if that's not Tim, I don't know what Tim is. The problem is now you got to look up what audacious and admirable is. You know? <laughs> right, well, that's true. <laughs> so we're doing a uh, special episode uh, responding to uh, Remnant Radio. And um, Remnant it has been somebody that we've loved over the years. And just had a little friendly pushback. So, Tim, if you want to take us into... Oh, well, yeah. Radio. Remnant Radio is awesome if you guys haven't heard of them. Um, I don't know if we'll put a link in the description, but maybe sure. that's something that we could actually yeah, do. Absolutely. They're really good at bringing all sides of different... Um, topics or debates, uh, whether it be things like eschatology or soteriology or, um, you know, if you have like uh, pedo versus credo baptism, stuff like that, Mm -hmm. I think they just put out a video on that. So, and they, they either get both sides of it or they'll interview someone who holds to one side and they'll just ask some questions to explain their position, Mm -hmm. even if they don't hold Very Mm open-minded. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they don't hold that position, it's very, very friendly. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's our goal in doing this. It's the way Um, to learn. Mm-hmm. Thing is it, so it great. Is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so our goal is to try and present them in the best way possible. Right. They have a lot of content out there, especially yeah. on this topic of uh, like it's, it's cessationism and continuationism. Mm-hmm. They're very much continuationists and mm-hmm. uh, believe in the uh, uh, continuing of the spiritual gifts mm-hmm. uh, for today. And um, But we do have some pushback on that um, because they're so, they're so passionate about that and they've challenged other mm-hmm. um, cessationists like Justin Peters and right. others um, and um, to come on their podcast right. and, you know, and, um, and ask them questions mm-hmm. or do an interview with them and such. Um, so we are doing the same to them now right. and uh, saying that um, we have a little pushback from some of their videos uh, and would love for them to respond. Um, but we do want to yeah. emphasize that we think they're awesome yeah. and we want to build their case for them as strong as possible and not build a straw man. It is very hard yeah. um, to do those. Well, things. there's so much nuance in this conversation too. And uh, I think one reason I wanted to do this is because a lot of the things on the cessationist side have been really bad. Like right. really bad. <laughs> um, and so as me- Terrible argument. Um, Somebody trying to uh, trying to infiltrate, I guess, both camps to be like, wait a minute, I think we're just missing like the forest for the trees here a little bit. Missing the dividing line. Yeah, we're doing all these other like right. we're going these after all these things. other things, and then it's yeah. like we get out lost in the weeds, <clears throat> and it's like, wait a minute, this isn't even what we really care about. Like right. this is so far right. out to be. It's just like, where are we actually like? This is the main issue. Yeah. But before we get too far into it, I think we should probably define. Those yeah, two terms, uh, sure. cessationist yeah. and yeah. continuationist. So, 
um, a cessationist, right, would believe that that there are n- not necessarily that God can't be doing healing or or prophesying even or or all of the the gifts that were given in the New Testament church, but they don't believe that it is consistently happening in the church at large today. Yeah. It's not a normal thing, and that there is no office of these things, mm-hmm. are, right? I, uh, hopefully I'm defining that so. yeah. uh, properly. And, so there's, yeah, yeah. And, and that's the there's nuance. There's different flavors. Yeah. That's and, the yeah. nuance yeah, there is are that, different you know, you'll have somebody who will be like, yeah, it's just the offices, you know, but anything is possible mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then you'll have people who are like, the spirit's dead, yeah. not working yeah, that's, at all. Yeah, that's, that's very <laughs> rare, dead, dead, dead. very yeah. rare. Well, we don't promote that. <laughs> um, and then, um, you know, and then there's other ones that'll will have different things. And on the continuation side, continuation side, it's the, similar in, in where you'll have yeah, you have different different levels or camps well, you know? yeah because some say that um old testament prophecy um is within continuity of the new testament that's mm-hmm. what remnant's position is they hold to the continuity view so continuationism that old testament prophecy and new testament prophecy it's the same it continues on and there's not a fundamental change in the prophecy right and um that's what they would hold to and that continues on through the church age um like old testament prophets new testament prophets and throughout the church age um the discontinuity view which is not what we are responding against although we could well, it, like well you're that. you're kind of narrowing it a little bit right. too much right now for just having our viewers that's a fair point you know because you're just talking about prophecy right now so sure. what would a cessationist or not a cessationist but a continuationist really say about all of the the spiritual yeah. gifts and right well it's just yeah. that they're they're still active in in the church today right yeah. um and like, and that we like should the be, first and, the new testament church exactly that just like the new about. testament be and that we should be pursuing these gifts um right. and that they're well i mean Sure. Yeah, depending on the continuation, yeah, the con- <laughs> depending on the continuation, it's it are rampant. Right, right. So it, it's just it's a very <clears throat> wide spectrum. Yeah. Some is like, oh yeah, it's happening all the time, and other people are like, is it? You know. So and then there's the defining of mm-hmm. of you know what is actually happening, sure. Um, sure. especially mm-hmm. with gifts like tongues and prophecy. And prophecy is the main one that we're going to be getting into yeah. today yeah, right. because we want to narrow it down as much as possible and respond. Well, so, like, yeah, because one of the terrible arguments on the cessationist side is like talking about healings and stuff. Like, well, we would see healings, da 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 da, and then a continuationist is like, I saw somebody who was blind from for fifty years get healed, and the continuationist should be, I mean, the cessationist should be like, oh, this is actually like a really good big shot against my belief. But they're like, no, we believe in healing, so that's okay. So I'm like, why did you bring that up then? <laughs> if you both believe in healing, right. in other words, you don't believe healing ceased. Right. So if somebody gets healed, that doesn't do anything to your position. But then so cessa- why are we talking yeah. about right. it? But then cessationists will be like, oh, continuationists believe that the, they have the gift of healing, so go and clean out a hospital. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's not their position. Yeah. That they, they don't claim that that's what the gift of healing is. Mm-hmm. So they don't have to respond to your dumb argument yeah. that you should be like, nobody is saying that that's right, what the right. gift is. So there's a lot of um straw men two ships sailing past each other yeah. in the and mass. it's very yeah. frustrating but anyway with remnant I, mean, I have Amen. listened Amen. to Amen. hours of remnant content and um uh more than i and usually it's on two times the speed so you guys talk very fast <laughs> um but uh <laughs> two times two, yeah, i did 1.25 today you, you just so because like i was walk, like i'm driving i gotta try and make sure i two get, get some input here yes. when i hear the videos, how the heck do you do when i hear they will sound like they are talking bodacious what can i say they will they will sound Sound like they were talking in slow motion in these videos to me. Mm. Um, <laughs> that's okay though. That's okay. Um, so anyway, I love. So uh, Remnant has destroyed terrible cessational arguments uh, like the cleaning out of the hospitals or like uh, the like uh, the gifts died out. Uh, we're Started dying, dying out. Yeah. Sorry, dying out near the end of Paul's life, even though Paul is like healing the entire island of Malta, and like you know he's getting bitten by snakes, and like it's not happening, and like all revelation are, is a prophecy. Revelation, <laughs> the book of Revelation is literally happening. So like, um, it's just it's it's like why, why are we even going there? Well, this is so this dumb is not, because this is not important. And they destroy is, remnant yeah. destroys this argument, and we we applaud you for that. Yeah. Well, because oh, the cessationist yeah. isn't even saying that the gift ceased yet. So right. why is it like the dying out thing? Well, obviously they're not dying out, right. and you don't even believe that they're dying out because Revelation's a whole prophecy, right. and that's the end of the 
the book of the Bible there. So it's like, you, you, what are you expecting? Less prophecy in the in when there's actually scripture still being written and there's still the the revelation still happening. So. All right, so, well, we definitely want um, to be true to what Remnant believes. So we do have a few videos that we want to respond to, um, just uh, certain clicks, uh, clips. We have heard all the clips in their entirety, and like I said, I've heard, um, well, almost, well, a lot of mm -hmm. Remnants. All of um, their um, discussion about the cessationist documentary that came out. Yeah, all nine parts. All nine, yeah. That's right, that was great. Um, I, I am mean, not. Many of them were, were very <coughs> enjoyable. That's, that's, I've that's only okay. seen a few videos. Yeah, many of them are very um, helpful. You have and again, and I only have five, so it's fine. Um, so between the three of us, you got 14 kids. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right, anyway, we do hope that we're being true uh, to what Remnant believes, uh, and uh, we've listened as much as you know we could um, to what they've said to build their arguments um, that we're responding to, trying not to build a straw man, trying to build as our, what did you call him before? Perceptive? Our perceptive yes. pastor. Pa pastor. Um, Passage? Uh, pa yeah. Perceptive pastor. Uh, Perpiscuous. A, a, uh, not a straw man, but a steel mm. man. Steel a man. steel man. Steel man, yeah. But uh, we also hope that you understand that's not always easy to do. So it may not be 100% accurate, you know, I don't have the mind of remnant um, in presenting what they believe. But our goal is to be as accurate as possible with these um, four, clip? four clips. Four mm -hmm. clips. Yeah. And with right. prophecies. Um, yeah, so Tim, Tim's got a list that yeah. he's going off of. That's why he's looking down a lot. He's yeah. a very um, organized, which is so oh, great because me and yeah. Jame are not <laughs> very organized. Oh, um, right. And we already oh, noticed that they hold to the continent. I'm running Sorry, from one I'm thing going. to another. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go. All right. So uh, also, just to note, they hold to the doctrine of sola scriptura, Amen. which states that scripture is the sole infallible rule of faith Have and practice it. for the church. That's the defining line that we're really I mean, this, trying, trying to... Cessationists always are saying that what continuationism does is it takes away from Sola Scriptura or from the Bible or from the authority of the Bible, but they don't go into why. Well, they'll say things like we'd have to add it to the canon, and that is not what we are trying to get here. We're just trying to say if there are other words of God outside of Scripture, you have to do something with that. Mm -hmm. And we're not saying, uh, well, they'd have to be yeah. added to the canon. Like, that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about how are we holding the Sola Scriptura then if there's these other words of God also. Mm -hmm. So our first question would be for Remnant, um, who, again, holds to the continuity view mm -hmm. of continuationism, uh, which is that, especially for prophecy. It's a lot of words. Sorry, <laughs> prophecy, it continues on. Um, how do, does Remnant define the ontological or the the nature right what is it actually is right of spontaneous prophecy right the spontaneous prophecy that is taking place or this modern prophecy or just prophecy um, that they say is continuing prophecy so, that's going on today in yeah. this video they say it is God breathed which is uh, what scripture is inerrant which is also what scripture is infallible which is also what scripture is and authoritative so Joel play that first sure. video for us so this video is, does modern day prophecy mean we have an open canon? So we're starting at, was it nine minutes in? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All revelation that comes through a human being is always going to be on the same authoritative level. Um, and, and I think we hope to prove just the opposite by using the scriptures to prove it. Right. Uh, so that's, you want to uh, correct me there? Yeah, that's an important thing because I don't, I don't want Peters or anybody else to try to soundbite you because you misspoke just a little bit. Because Yes, I did, yeah. I know that we're all on the same page, that all of God's revelation, whether th if God speaks, it is equally authoritative, no matter when and how he speaks. Whatever he says, because he's God, the ultimate authority, whatever he says comes with ultimate authority, no matter what. And so, uh, and so Miller, you kept adding in, once I kind of interjected for a moment, like, through through a person through a person through as a it's person. mediated through a man as it's mediated so what we would say as continuationists is uh is that the revelation is always of ultimate authority however it can be muddled through a person who's trying to interpret and then apply that message uh that's different with scripture now it, it is true in scripture that teachers can mess it up Teachers can misinterpret and misapply the Bible, but the revelation itself is inerrant 
and it is all authoritative because it is God breathed. Okay, and so what we would hold to is that the revelation from God is inerrant, but just like teachers can misinterpret God's written word, prophets can misinterpret God's spontaneous revelation. So that's, that's I think, how we would try to qualify that. Josh, did you yeah, uh, follow? All right. No offense, Josh, we're just cutting it off before you uh, <laughs> go in there. Um, okay, just to point out right there is that they seem to be saying, just like teachers can um, misinterpret. misinterpret misinterpret and misapply the scriptures, prophets can misinterpret and misapply the prophecy that they're getting. Mm -hmm. And I would say, okay, that's fine. That happens with scripture. Scripture is still the word of God. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't change the fact that like, just because a teacher does that doesn't mean that it's not the word of God. Which they would say is true. Right. But so now, why is that not true for prophecy? Now for the prophecy, it's like, well, but it's still the words of God, mm -hmm. just because they're being misinterpreted or uh, misapplied. misapplied means that, well, if you have those words, mm -hmm. they're still able to be interpreted and applied mm -hmm. correctly, even if the prophet is misapplying them. Mm -hmm. So even their own definition, and I know you would push back on that even being a definition of prophecy, yeah. probably. Well, um, that's what I was just looking out yeah. Yeah. to get, get that scripture ready, because I, I, I think it, I, I don't know, I, I think it does a, a pretty good job of, of telling us what prophecy really you looks like. That? You can bring it Sure, that. I, don't want, I didn't want to cut you no, off. No, 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 you're good. You're good. But, um, but if we look at Deuteronomy 18, 18 um, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, mm -hmm. not the thoughts in his head or the right. vision right. of the whatever um, I'm telling him, but I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command mm. him. Not just kind of, you know, but all that I command, which is a whole other thing, too. Mm -hmm. It's a command. And it, this is, he's talking about, um, th this is kind of a general statement for prophets. Yeah. Because if you read the context prior, I mean, uh, and then read what, what comes after this. And then it says um, in verse 20. It says, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak right. or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the, the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that says a lot right mm -hmm. there. It's what they've been commanded by God, and it's not just a thought in their head, mm -hmm. but it's the words that come out of their mouth are from God. Mm -hmm. And so if that is true, and, and with this continuationist kind of viewpoint, then well, that would hold true for the prophecies for, for the New Testament church mm -hmm. as well then, right? So, so that's how we would judge what a, what a prophecy would look like, mm -hmm. I would think, mm -hmm. um, at least in my little bit of, of time, you know, listening sure. to, to mm -hmm. the videos and, and, uh, and trying to pay attention to what they were saying. I think that this kind of speaks against that a bit. So Yeah, well, here's one issue that I have <clears throat> with, I guess, the whole continuationist like, argument is... We all believe that something ceased because we all believe that scripture is no longer being written. So then the question would be, if these prophecies say the book of Revelation is a prophecy, it's inerrant, it's infallible. The we, book of Revelation the is The book a of Revelation is a revelation, right? Okay, well, he told me to say it. it's scripture. It's scripture. So therefore, it's the word of God or something. Or it's the word of God. Well, when that prophecy was given before it was put into the canon or even told by anybody that this is scripture, it already Recognized. was authoritative. It already, the, the ontology of it was God speaking already. And then later on, I mean, that book took a while for it to even get canonized. All the way before that, though, I would hope that Remnant would agree, this book was scripture. It was the written words of God. Right. So with well, that verse, not because up, of the canonization. Exactly. Right. You're exactly. Getting, you're getting ahead of our points oh. here, but that's. that's <laughs> but I think what that verse brings up in Deuteronomy is it's either the word of God, it comes to pass, and it is the word of God, and there's not. It's not lesser of authority. I think that's what the point that Roundtree was saying mm -hmm. would be. 
that it's if it's the word of God, it's the word of God. It's the same level of authority. Lo- love that they that they say that. Right. 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 Just love Which that they would, say that. We would say yeah. that's the whole point. Or. The prophet spoke presumptuously, which I think happens many times that people just say this is a prophecy from God, but they didn't actually get a prophecy from God. And we can tell that because it doesn't come to pass. It's not like it's half right. It's like it either is God's word. So let's treat it like it is God's word or it's not God's word at all. And so then it should be discarded. Yeah. And I know that they have rebuttals to Deuteronomy 18 and they have videos of that. So, uh, but. I have not seen them. So well, I no, which is to fine. Bring things um, up that they but I, addressed, but um, but I, I think it's a valid point, um, especially for the argumentation. I don't think it's one of the ones that that was like, well, this is dumb to bring up. Like this is an important thing to yeah. very much bring up, uh, and that cessationists have brought up. Um, they have responded to it in different videos. Mm. And my 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 thing is that even in this video here, yeah. under their own definitions of what they are saying, is prophecy is just because it's misinterpreted and misapplied by the prophet doesn't mean that what they got wasn't the word of God. Like if it's truly the word of God at any point, if any of these prophets ever have the truly word of God there and that gets recorded or spoken or in somebody else's possession, someone else has this word of God that is outside of the scriptures. But it's equal in authority to it. That's what they were just saying, right. even under their own right. admission. Like right. so, even if even if it's like, well, unless you're saying that every single prophet always gets it wrong, and then that's a whole nother. Right. Thing. In which case, what's you the know? point of prophecy? Right. Then? Yeah. Um, so our rebuttal to well, how would you know what presumptuous prophecy is then? Mm-hmm. If if seventy five percent of it's wrong, mm-hmm. how how can you make any judgment of any prophecy mm-hmm. unless it's a hundred percent accurate? Mm-hmm. Well, and that's why like, it says when it says you need not be afraid of him is 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 really strong. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, okay, so if these people go on, they have prophecies that are either false or like fifty percent or whatever. It's it's kind of like, okay, thanks for that. Also, it's kind of like I don't know. And stuff might be right. Like say Trump becomes president, and it's like I prophesied that. That does not need to be from God for it to still be right. true. Right. So I think Trump. I think that is kind of a stipulation i guess that is on that passage of like okay if this thing comes to pass yeah but if i predict the sun's gonna rise tomorrow and then that happens it doesn't mean i'm a prophet from that right. so it has to be something that is it, testable. it's commanded by god what what is commanded you know to be yeah. spoken right yeah right so one of our biggest things for and the Remy- test of the prophet oh. right you know like you, that uh, the short-term prophecies would be given to show that they're they're legit, yeah. and then, right, you know, right. so, go ahead, yeah. sorry. No, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> um, okay, so uh, our rebuttal would be yes. Um, if these other words of God from prophets are in a Christian's possession, either verbally spoken or somebody writes it down, hands it to them or whatever, do they have to live by these words? Mm-hmm. And the question that we would have for Remnant to answer is, Matthew 4.4, 4, which is quoting, I believe it's Deuteronomy 8.3. Um, okay. Uh, Can you is, not read this? No, I can't. It's, I already <laughs> don't, buddy. It's Jesus answers <laughs> Satan in the wilderness. Okay. Uh, it is written, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Mm-hmm. We don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Not just the scriptures. Not just like scripture, in the yeah. during times of inscripturation, there were there was scripture and there were audible. Audible yep. visions, dreams, words of God, all like audible words of God, mm-hmm. voices from heaven are coming down. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's all the same nature though. It's ontologically the nature of it is all the same. It's all the words of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but mm-hmm. by every, every word. word that yeah. proceeds from the mouth of God. So if... It doesn't say by scripture. So if it's preserved, know? do they have to live by it? If it's yes, doesn't that follow that we would hold to soul scriptura plus these other words? Right. That is the question right. that we really would love to be answered. Like, yeah. what do you do with these <clears throat> other words of God? Mm-hmm. Don't you have to live by them? And if you do, how do you hold the soul of scripture? With them? Mm-hmm. And then... If you don't have to live by them because it's not scripture, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which 
I still don't understand how that even makes any sense because mm-hmm. it's not scripture. So word of God has to mean scripture there. Right, which is not what Jesus interesting. Meant. Well, it's certainly not what Deuteronomy 8.3 right, meant. Right, right. Um, uh, it's about the nature that is coming from God. It's not that it's included in the canon. Right. But we also want to know if it's... Well, if, can, yeah, canon, the definition of canon and definition of scripture are different. Right, right. yeah. But if, if they don't because it's not scripture then why is something scripture or not scripture? Mm-hmm. And that's what we want to get to in this second video. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Responding to Justin Peters, yeah. 117 in. I understand. We're, not, we're supposed to love, hope, all things, but... I switch chairs. But I, I can't see a way how it's popular to respond to our videos, but not to, to handle the own errors that are taking place in his own denomination. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's completely inconsistent. Yeah. Okay. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going at this hot. Okay. Listen, man, also, I, P- I, Peter's... I'm going to err on the same of ki- on the side of kindness, uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I think you're right. I think you're too. I think, right. think Peter's also yeah. mentions, oh, yes. um, you know, hey, these guys probably think the Old Testament prophets are infallible, uh, and and yet this kind of undermines their argument. Yeah. Uh, we hold what is called the continuity view, uh, mm-hmm. which says that prophecy is the same in the Old Testament and the New Testament, in the same way that we would say the Book of Revelation is canonized, therefore infallible. Uh, we would say that all of the Old Testament canonized, uh, canonized prophecies are infallible, just like there were history books in the Old Testament that we lost to history, um, like a uh, prophet uh, Samuel the seer, Gad the prophet, Nathan the seer. These books mentioned in First Corinthians twenty-nine, for example, uh, these are revelations, but because they weren't canonized, one given inspired by the word of God, but also recognized as God's word in church history, it wasn't canonized. So when we talk about inerrancy of the scriptures, we're talking about everything that the church universal has acknowledged Uh, as holy. Can I pause it? No, you're supposed to let it go through the whole thing. The scripture, that is what is canonized. We agree. Prophecies in the New Testament, prophecies in the Old Testament that were canonized are inerrant and infallible. However, in the same way that there were sons of the prophets and schools of the prophets and prophetic words that were given by Agabus's daughters that weren't written down and prophecies uh, that were given uh, when uh, Saul sent his messengers to go after uh, uh, David and, and the spirit came on his messengers and they prophesied or when Saul prophesied, these things aren't recorded, they're not canonized. So we would just affirm just like there were sons and daughters prophesying in the church of Corinth and uh, people prophesying in the Old Testament that were not recorded, we would admit that the revelation comes from God. The revelation itself is infallible and inerrant. However, it's possible that the interpretation and application of those words weren't. We've, again, done many videos on this. So no, it doesn't undermine our argument because we hold to a continuity view of prophecy, not what is the majority of charismatics view of discontinuity. Um, Anyway. Wow, there's a lot there. Oh, sorry, I really got you on that one. Huh? No, I, I, I've heard it before. <laughs> but never like this. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I keep wanting to stop and start it so I don't forget it, but go ahead. No, 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 you can oh. finish your point. I want um, you to do your point before. Yeah, it was, oh, I think it's going to get into exactly what we were, what we were going to talk about here Is it anyway. simply not scripture because it wasn't canonized by the church universal? If you heard him say that, it's mm-hmm. a, and look... I don't know if this is remnants view or not. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to put words in their mouth because Mm -hmm. Josh is at the end of an hour long video here. He's kind of like, you know, rambling a little bit. He's getting emotional. As one is, uh, uh, wants wants to do. do. I love that. Um, Great phrase. So we would love for remnant to like respond to this if this is their actual view, but it seems to be implied by the video above um, uh, that is something simply not scripture because it wasn't canonized by the church universal. Like like, the the seer. Right, so like Samuel the Seer. Like, look, I agree that there were other books lost to history that prophets. Yeah, they were. Yeah. They were the words of God, yeah. and we don't have them today. Yeah. So, I, it, it's of no relevance of like today, mm-hmm. but like it would have been when they had it. Mm-hmm. It would have been the same ontologically as the scriptures, and they would have lived by them. Mm-hmm. Whoever had it in their possession. Mm-hmm. Um, but it didn't make it not scripture. Right. Not it's ontologically still, the words of God. Been, it's, it's still, still it, that's authoritative what, I think, and inerrant. I think in this one clip, and this is what has been a little bit frustrating for me when listening to Remnant, is because they seem to be saying two different things. Like in one sentence, they say the scripture is inspired, and I might have gone so far as to say because it was deemed as such by the church universal. And then two sentences later, they'll say that it's not, um, the, these words that are outside of scripture are also inspired. So they are on the same level, but that one did not have to do with 
the church canonizing it for its inspiration. In other words, where is it getting its inspiration from? If it is a word of God, it's inspired whether or not the church canonizes it or not. Right. The canonization has nothing to do with it except that the church is saying that these are all of the inspired words that we have. They, they we recognize have that what, it was inspired, but it doesn't mean that um, the church had the authority to... Um, like Grant the, it inspirational like status. I don't, it, it, I don't know if that's what they're saying. Well, it just it would give the authority of the books over to the external universal church recognizing it as and canonizing it mm -hmm. or putting it into the canon as opposed to the, on, the ontological nature of the books. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I don't know if this is Remnant's official position or anything, right, right. but it just seems like it from this video. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's really just recognizing the thing for what it is. You know, the canon recognized what they had they got rid of the things that that they they saw as no, no this is not this is not something that was inspired by god mm -hmm. and but this is what we have this is the canon that's it it's just a recognition of god's w spoken mm -hmm. word uh, and so well if there were other words that were spoken by god they're as valid as the ones canonized right. because Unless God is speaking two different languages, right, right. one's not true and one's true, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't, it, it, like you said, the ontological nature, is that, that's redundant, isn't it? It is, it um, is, and I say it all the time. <laughs> um, is, uh, is that it is God's spoken word, regardless of whether it's been canonized right. or not. Right. Also, yeah. so if they, even if they aren't scripture, aren't they still a part of every word that proceeds yeah. from the mouth of God? Right. That really yep. is the heart of the question. Is like, you have these words that aren't canonized, but they're still, by their own admission in these videos, are saying they're words of God. So don't we have to live by them if we have them? Like, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yeah, I'll bring up some of these other verses that we talked about too. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living and active. You guys know the verse, right? Oh, Everybody knows that. Sword. It doesn't say for scripture is living and active. It says the word of God. Now, I, it seems like what Remnant is doing is putting an equal sign between scripture equals word of God or word of God equals scripture. And then these other prophecies are like in their statement of the prophet, prophetic statement that some of them signed is at best, prophecy is at best a word from the Lord. I don't see where the difference is. If it's from God, it's this, for the word of God is living and active. Or every word that comes from the mouth, if you don't like the word of God, then it's a word from God. As I don't think that makes any difference in terms of the <laughs> nature of it. Let the word of right. Christ dwell richly in you. Um, mm -hmm. Colossians 3.16, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but all of it, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So I like what you said, Tim, to me. A little while time. ago. I know, for the first time in our lives. But it's like, look, I don't care if this is for the whole church for all time. I just want to know what the words of God are. If there is more words of God out there besides Scripture, I want to, to know what it is. Right. And if Jesus says I'm to live by them, what would be the problem with living by them? Right. So if it is the Word of God, let's treat them as if they are the Word of God and live by them, which Jesus tells us to do. And if it's not the Word of God, then you're a cessationist. In my opinion. Okay. Should we go on? <laughs> yeah, all right. So this one, this one, this one okay. really, this one I think really gets into the app, uh, application of this. <clears throat> so question three that we have: Were spoken words of God during the time up to the death of the last apostle? Got it. During times of inscripturation, the same ontologically, got it. The nature and authoritatively as written words of God. Right. So we're spoken words of God and written words of God, the same in nature and by authority. We feel like you have stated that as a yes in these videos, but, and even corrected Miller when he kind of misspoke, mm -hmm. um, saying that there was like a lesser form of authority. Mm -hmm. And it was like, they were like, well, we don't want to put that out. So let's not have anybody clip that. And um, they corrected him on that mm -hmm. and said, no, it is because it's from God. Anything that's from God is the same right. authority. Yeah. So, so now can you just play the, uh, the third video here? Okay. It's going to talk about the potentially other words of God that were written in the intertestamental time that are prophecy. All right. So this is from the same 
video as the first one that we did. This is just a little bit after. It's called The Ancient Mysteries of the Essenes <clears throat> by Ken Johnson. It's a collection of, uh, of things that were discovered when they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls. I mean, you ever wonder where in the uh, Old Testament is there a messianic profile of the Messiah coming to cast out demons? Like, what, how is that an expectation? We, we, we certainly see that the Spirit will be on him. We see that he's going to you know, be a suffering servant, uh, that he would open the blind eyes and deaf ears, but we don't see a lot about casting out demons. Well, it turns out there was a number of prophecies about that uh, that you find and was discovered when they discovered the Dead Sea, Dead sea Scrolls. Um, but not only that, you gotta, you gotta wonder, why is it that Jews at the time were so readily accepting of Jesus as Messiah? Well, because there was tons of prophecies about of the what Bible, the Messiah would do. the Jews were so ready to um, accept Jesus <laughs> as Messiah. Couple, and this is just a small, sattering, uh, small smattering. Uh, it's hard to right. say. Right. say that. So this is the intertestamental period. After the, after the Old Covenant was completed, these yeah, prophecies... Yeah, so this is pre-Christian. Yeah, so these prophecies were given by Jewish prophetic people who were believers in the Lord, but it was before Jesus came and after the old covenant was completed. Correct? Yeah. So we only know of these writings I and mean, we know the of Testament. these writings. There's other, there's other quotations of them, but we, we never actually got copies of these writings to actually know what was in them until the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. And so one might wonder like, well, why have we never heard this? Well, it's because it's still making its way into popular literature, but check this out. This is from the Testament of Simeon. Again, not in our Bible, written prior to Christ's coming, uh, but after the finishing of the Old Testament, says this, then the world will rest from the war of Shem will be, and Shem will be glorified because the Lord God, the mighty one of Israel, will appear on earth as man and save the seed of Adam. Then all the deceitful, wicked spirits will be trampled underfoot and no longer rule over man. Then will I arise at the resurrection in joy and will bless the most high God because of his marvelous works, because God hath taken a body and eaten with men and saved men. For the Lord will raise up from Levi as it were a priest and from Judah as it were a king who is both God and man. So he will save the Gentiles in Israel. Okay, that's just one Damn. quotation. I know it's so, pretty powerful. I get chills just reading because I'm like, that's insane. So, uh, let me pause you right there and ask you, sure. Michael, is that scripture? No. No, so it's not scripture. No, we don't agree that it's scripture. We don't believe it's concluded in the canon, but can we all acknowledge that it is in some sense revelatory? It it's clearly has data and information that no one expected to, to happen or no one expected to come. It, and it clearly fulfills a, uh, a description of who oh. Jesus is and what Jesus did. When clearly. You think about the purpose of prophecy. The purpose of prophecy is to point people to the Lord to Adonai, to Yahweh in the Old Testament. It, it's literally like the whole point of Deuteronomy 13 is to show you, hey, like when these people perform signs and wonders, but they, they tell you, hey, let's go worship these other gods. Or they prophesy in the name of these other gods. You don't follow them. You stone them. You get rid of them. But when they're pointing you to God, you go, oh, this is an accurate prophecy. That's what all the Old Testament prophets did. They were trying to point Israel back to the God and back to the covenants. And so here sure. we have an accurate prophecy that's pointing to God, specifically before the Messiah even shows up, it's pointing to that Messiah so they'd be ready to receive him. So my, my cessation is... All right, a couple things. One is mm -hmm. there's debate as to whether they're actually inter... inter testamental. Testamental, or if they are like 200 to 300 AD. Mm. Um, uh, so... I didn't look that up, so... Yeah. I, like, I mean, I, I can't say one way if or If they're the, authentic. I mean, I can't say one way or the, or the other. My question for Remnant is just what they're implying about what is happening mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. Because if these words from the Testament of Simeon are indeed words from God, right? They, that's what they, they said, an accurate prophecy pointing to God, and they were... Like, what does prophecy mean? Making yeah, it prophecy a, means from God. And they said that's what the Old Testament prophets were doing. So, like, so obviously these prophets are also doing that. So we have... And they said an accurate prophecy from God. I mean, sorry, uh, from, yeah, an accurate prophecy, right. just like the Old Testament prophecy. Right, right. So if these are indeed words from God, aren't they included in every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? This yes. is what we keep harping back to. Like, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God would then be, well, these, the scriptures, plus the Testament of Simeon, mm -hmm. has words that proceeded from the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. And now I sure. have it in my possession. 
Like, right, you can read it right and, there. And yeah. God commanded him to say it. I am so glad that Remnant mm-hmm. put out this video because literally we were talking about the lost letter of Laodicea and we were trying to figure mm-hmm. out, you know, yeah. like... Would that you, be included? Well, in... was it even a letter of Laodicea or whatever? But if it was, it's like, well, would that... Like, if we found it today, it would be included in the canon and, like, all these different things. And then I was like, wait a minute. This fits the bill. Right. It's during times of inscripturation. It's written, and it's proven to be the Word of God, like, theoretically. Like, according to what they're saying. They're mm-hmm. saying it is the Word of God. It is prophecy. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> here it is. Yeah. So, but it, how can't it be included in every word that proceeds yeah. from the mouth of God? And therefore, wouldn't I, being in possession of more words of, more words of God, as a Christian, be bound to live by them, just as I am the scriptures. Right, right. Which are also the words of God and ontologically the same as the words in the Testament of Simeon. <laughs> right, so right. it would now be Sol Scriptura plus, plus these other words of God. Yeah. Testament of Simeon. This is a question I need to know how Remnant parses this out. Yeah. Like, how are how are these words that you just claimed are words of God, accurate prophecies during times of... You can't even talk about time. Like, it's during times of inscripturation yeah. still. Can you explain um, just that time, the time of inscripturation? Like, what does that mean? Well, just be t- up to the <clears throat> death of the last apostle, which is just after all that, of that. After that, nobody no, believes. No books of the Bible were written. Mm-hmm. So, however you want to define it, I don't know how Remnant officially defines it, the close of the canon, mm-hmm. but that's what people mean by the, de- the death of the last apostle. And, you know, by the so, yeah, so there's there's no more scripture being written, which they're trying to affirm. The problem I have with it is the definition of the word scripture. Now you're trying to say scripture plus these other words of God, which I agree that that's a great question because Jesus doesn't say live by scripture alone. Right. He says live by every word of the mouth of God. Our argument for sola scriptura is that scripture is the only words of God we have left. Right. If we had all these other words, we would just include that. We would live by them, too. Yeah, and we wouldn't hold the soul of Scripture right, up. Which, which is okay. We would still, hold, all right. scripture, we would still <laughs> hold Scripture in very high esteem. Yeah, because it's, it's of the same nature as these other words of God still. I just... My but, question is yeah. the, the nature... Uh, the definition of the word Scripture. Because what Josh said there, he asked, is, are, are these Scripture? And he said, no. Because it wasn't added to the canon. I say, No. This is why we have question two, which is, it, it seems to be your position that something is scripture because it was added to the canon. Words of God that are added to the canon are right, scripture, right. not words, words of, of God, God that are not added to the canon are just not scripture because. <clears throat> but they're authoritative, and, and all of that and inspired yeah. equally. Yeah, but the issue. But the, <laughs> but, but the issue is. I think. But the what issue do we is, do with this? The like, issue is. The issue is. Are they? Are they authoritative because they're canonized? Yeah. No, I, I, I don't, I can't see a remnant saying, yep, yeah. when they're canonized as scripture, that's when they become right, authoritative. Right. They were authoritative but, before then. Yeah. But, but before they were canonized, they weren't authoritative. I don't, I do not, I can't yeah. believe that that's their position. I mean, yeah. maybe it is, but it, it, it can't be. It, it has to be authoritative because of its ontological nature. Yeah. The problem is, and that's great, and I think they would affirm that about scripture. Yes, it's ontological. It's it, the nature. I'm doing it again. The nature of what scripture is gives it its authority. Mm-hmm. They say that in the first video we mm-hmm. played, right? But that's also the case with these other words right. of God. It's the same nature. That's yeah. what they say in the first video, and yet so, it seems to be that they're saying, "Well, it's not scripturized, mm-hmm. so it's we don't have to add it to the canon. That's fine, but you still have to live by it. You can't just say, "Well, I only live by sola scriptura," and, and like. Yeah, you know, yeah, like right. you can't you bring sh- to me these other words of God. You can't bring to me the Testament of Simeon. Yeah. And I'm like, that, if you're saying it's the word of God, yes, I can. Right, right. Well, one thing that Josh says a lot is, and it's kind of like a gotcha moment, which is kind of good. But it's like, you know, if it walks like a duck, looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, just call it a duck. It so what he's trying to say is like all these prophecies that Spurgeon had and after the time of inscripturation, you know, cessationists don't want to call them prophecy. So because then it gets into the discussion that we're having now. So instead they'll call it, uh, it was a new impression or whatever. And then Josh is like, just call it prophecy because that's what it is. My thing is, you have, I think you have to do the same thing with these written words of God. They're written, inspired words of God. That is the definition of scripture. You can't just say, well, it's not in the canon, so I don't think it's scripture. Just add it to your canon because it is scripture whether you want it to be or not. That's the definition of what scripture is. Or at least live by it and just have it in two and, places. And, 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 and just have, yeah. have it in two places. I, I, I do not mind saying that you can have it in two places. Mm-hmm. That's fine. You know, like, I, I guess. The, the, it's just, but, yeah, the Westminster, but, uh, Con- at least admit the, the Westminster Confession I have up here 
under the name of Holy Scripture, which we would both believe, I, I would assume that they would agree with that in their definition of Sola Scriptura, because that's kind of where it came from. It says, under the name of Holy Scripture, or the word of God written, are now these books of the Old and New Testament. That's the definition of Scripture. It's not canonized words of God. Scripture means words of God that are written. Sacred they, writings. Is that that's the thing. with the, the script just means written down. So it's just the Scripture is just the written down version of the words of God. And if they're saying that the testimony of Simeon is a written down word of God, whether you want to call it Scripture or not, it is. Right. Or you have to give it. If, if God it. spoke it, it is. Yeah, ontologically. You, or you have to give a defini different just definition a, of what yeah. Scripture is, which... Yeah. Is it part of every word that proceeds from the mouth of God right. is my question. Right. That is always my question when it comes back to this. Once you yeah. prove that these other words of God, like sorry, that these prophecies, these other words are from God. Now we have other words of God. Aren't, aren't they a part of every word that proceeds from the mouth of yeah. God? I need to live by them if I have right. them in my possession. Right. Will I? I don't know. But now I've got the Testament of Simeon in my possession. So I don't know what to do with this now. Yep. Like according to your definition. Mm -hmm. So that's why... Happens. All right, this one, all right, this one gets a little bit out of the weeds. I had to include into it. the weeds or out of the weeds. No, uh, I don't know. It's just a little different. <laughs> Somewhere in the forest. So I had to. Little little I, I just had to. I just yeah. had to include this because um, I just needed to. Um, okay. All right. Uh, okay. Play, play the video first, and then I'm going to ask the question. I think you might get a kick out of this one. 2024 prophecies, will any of them come to pass? Part dose. The connection between the watch, uh, the watchmen and the gatekeepers, so if the watchmen are more like the prophetic people who she says see far away, and they need to be in touch with the gatekeepers, the ones who are interceding. I mean, certainly we want a relationship between prophecy and intercession. Uh, on some level, I mean, I just think Ephesians 6, we're to all pray in the spirit at all times which is to pray in accordance with the guidance of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit leads us. That's how we pray. So there's a sense in which we can all do that. I mean, it's fine. We, yeah, let's get the intercessors and the prophets talking. That, that's a good thing. I, I just, it's hard for me to see that as like a real prophetic word because that, that should always be true this year and every year. Um, and we should all be seeking to pray in accordance with the Spirit's desires and and then I think the last thing that I would say is she mentioned seven mountains and she mentioned decreeing and declaring. So both of these are like when we prophesy, we want to avoid packing our personal theology into it. Uh, so seven mountains, dominionism, uh, God wants to take over the seven mountains of influence, government, church, culture, or entertainment and yeah, there are five others and so basically different spheres sectors mountains of society it, it it's heavily pushed in some circles not mine i'm not into it um I, I i don't see dominionism being a thing i mean certainly we need to subdue the earth as genesis 128 tells us but i don't like packing a certain branch of theology into it and the decreeing and declaring is another example of that um i i i don't like that decree and declare that's kind of a word of faith approach and i think if we're going to share a prophetic word let's strip it of uh denominational flair and of our stream and color and branch of of christianity and just give us give us the unadulterated word of the lord uh not colored in any way by uh by your own say eschatology or something else so, okay. those are mine all right, now this this is on responding to will any of the 2024 prophecies come to pass part two, and um, so again they're kind of the only video I didn't get to watch. Well, so they're kind of at the end of the you know doing a lot of these, um, and uh, so again I don't want to misrepresent if maybe he mis misspoke, but I, I I have an issue with this, it's, you know, if it's the word of God that he got that they got. I think it was a she in this case. If it's the word of God that was given, like if the way that you test it is, well, I look in the scripture, I don't see that in scripture, but then somebody else looks at it and they're like, oh yeah, the seven mountains, that's in scripture. And so then it's like, well, now, so now is, it is a true problem. Right, is it, is it true or is it not true? And if it doesn't line, line up with Roundtree's theology, it's immediately not true. Hmm. So it's like, so we can't, so like God, God, that type of prophecy has ceased. 
God, God can't give that those, you know, we shouldn't mm. pack our own theology into, mm. you know, our own personal theology into this. Just give us the unadulterated word of the Lord. It's how do you know do that? if God's putting his words in your mouth? Well, right. I, I was going to say, how, how do you such a, <laughs> It's such an interesting way of phrasing how do you what know prophecy it, is. How do you know it wasn't the unadulterated word right. that they got? Right. You know? right. Like, I mean, and, and I get right. it. How do you but, test that? But, you know what I mean? And I get it. Like, I agree that that's not a prophecy. You know what I mean? Like, I agree. If it's a true prophecy, why would the person have, like, mixing it with... I don't think that they were trying to mix it with something that was... It's not like they got the pure word of God, but then they just had to put in their own theology. I don't think they got the word of God at all. And if they did, I think they would have just said whatever it was. And it might have been that. Sure. My question you know? is, yeah, why yeah. can't it be that? Right, that's right, my exactly, question. Yeah. That, so that ceased. So you're you're determining. You're yeah. now claiming that that kind of prophecy has ceased. Don't mm. do that. And I'm like, the decreeing and declaring, God cannot give that, it that. That's word. ceased. Yeah. That hasn't happened. We can't do that anymore. No, nope, we can't. We can't. Yeah. We can't. Can't do those kind of words. Yeah. Oh, Only like, the other kind like of commanding? words. Commanding. You know, decreed, <sighs> declared, command. Yeah, the it, word that yeah. I've commanded. Yeah, it's yeah amazing. I mean, look at the amount of like fervor and gusto that the old testament especially the prophets had there it's like thus saith the lord they don't shy away from saying that at all Mm -hmm. but i've heard remnants say we do we don't want to say that we want to say i'm getting a sense you know or things like that it might be the word of the lord is that what they say i don't know if that's ever been but it seems to be the implication of like you know i think this is the word of the Mm -hmm. lord or it might be the word of the lord it's almost presumptuous (laughs) <laughs> it kind of goes against the Deuteronomy 18 one. It's really... Well, I mean, just any time that it says, thus saith the Lord, like the, if it's a con- continu- continuity, continuity view, that's what the Bible is saying. There has to prophecy, be some... Is thus saith the Lord. So how can you not say that? There, there has to be some... If you're holding to the continuity view as a continuationist, and Agabus says, thus says the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. in the New Testament, and Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Amos, etc., 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 say, thus saith the Lord, and then prophesy... How has that ceased? Why are prophets never allowed to say that? Mm-hmm. Like, there has to be at least a realm in which that needs to be able to be said if you're holding to the mm-hmm. continuity view, I would think. I would love a response to that. Mm-hmm. Like, there has to be an avenue in which you can say, thus saith the Lord as a prophet. And mm-hmm. I want to know why you would say, nope, don't say that. Why, why, are, we, why are you training people in that? If, if you're holding to the continuity view and, and everything is as it was mm-hmm. in Old and New Testament, mm-hmm. when... Agabus clearly said, thus says the Holy Spirit. Isaiah clearly said, thus saith the Lord. Like, this is clear. And I understand you want to be like, well, we don't want just everybody saying, thus saith the Lord. And I'm like, eggs. That is exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because you, you now have a I, lot less profits if right. that was the standard. Yep. It, um, that is exactly right. Also, why, like, what? And let's go. I'm good with profits, mm-hmm. you know? But. I want to bring up one thing too. Because I, I just want. Real I agree prophecy. with that. I agree with that. I just want the real stuff. Yeah. If it's going to be real, and I just haven't seen the evidence mm-hmm. of it, and if I do, well, I need to add it from every word that proceeds mm-hmm. from the mouth of God, and I need to change my definition of soul scripture, mm-hmm. which I'm open to doing. Right. But right. but but I need to be proved. I can't just you know right willy nilly change this foundational right. aspect. Right. Right. I did want to. I did want to just fickle, say like fickle scripture. Again, it's kind of like how they say like, well, as long as it lines up with scripture, mm-hmm. then it's fine. My question is, so if somebody got something, that, let's just take a non-controversial subject like soteriology, mm. right? So let's just say like somebody got something that said Molinism is true, Amen. Amen. right? And so then I'm like, well, I don't, I don't believe in Molinism, <laughs> so that was not the word of the Lord. But then let's say somebody got the word, Molinism is false. The Lord told me that. It's not true. Right now, I'm like, yeah, I don't see that anywhere in scripture. This must be the word of the Lord. That's a true prophecy there. So now I've got words of God that w- the whole church can live by. Molinism's false, wonderful. How do we even like judge that? Right? If if somebody's saying, yep, I got a word from the Lord. Molinism is false. I'm like, it lines up with scripture. But then person B, who's a Molinist, is like, that doesn't line up with scripture. That person must be a false prophet. And it's like, so what are we talking about? Mm. Like, wh- why has that kind of like what God that, that has specific, ceased. that kind of specific pro- um, prophecy that has ceased. But you know, mm-hmm. but other things are you know fair, fair right. game. You know, I'm see I'm seeing the color pink. Right. You know, oh, that, right. Well, right. the Lord can still speak that. Why can't right. couldn't the Lord? Speak well, that? I, that, sure. that goes into what I was going to say before is that they'll mention sometimes the cessationist 
which is a this is a straw man of cessationists because they'll the remnant will say oh god can't do that the devil can speak in a dream but god can't speak in a dream they, they mentioned that when they talk about the dreams of people in uh, muslim countries right. who are being right. brought to christ wait wait, wait. yeah but that's Rem- cessationist but that's cessationist argument is really dumb no that's not what cessationists say okay at least right. yeah, yeah. I, I don't think so yeah. no but if they did say it it, it was really dumb, dumb. to say and, that god and, can't do something right. Right. Yeah. that's but not the, the truth that's not true <laughs> I am perfectly fine with God speaking to anybody anytime that he wants. Amen. The problem is that if that actually happens, we shouldn't treat it as if it's lesser authority than the rest of God's words. This is really what cessationists are trying to say, but they never say it for some weird reason. Yeah. What they're trying to say is if you are getting words from God and they actually are words from God, then it's not God can't do this. He definitely can do that. But if he does it, we should treat it like it is. It is now included in God. every word that proceeds from the mouth yep. of God that we live by. And it seems like what Remnant is trying to do is kind of have their cake and eat it too. Kind of say, it. well, it's the same as these New Testament prophecies. But then when they're getting those prophecies, they're even saying that they're inspired. And at least in some, and, and, yeah, or the Testament of Simeon. And that's, that's revelation that's given from God. But we don't want to call it scripture because it wasn't canonized. But I don't even want to call it the word of God. That's a, another big but problem. Just call it what it is. Just say we have more words of God and we it have to live like by them. It walks like a duck. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So that's the problem that cessationists have. Well, we'll, we'll say, no, no, no. Spurgeon got an impression. He, Spurgeon didn't say, God told me this, this, and this. He's like, I don't know why I, I thought this. And that happens all the time. That's not what Isaiah was saying. That's not right. what Ezekiel was saying. Isaiah knew. They knew, uh, and I don't know, maybe, I don't know how they knew exactly, but the point is, they were saying, thus saith the Lord, what what seems like is happening, Jeremiah is the weeping prophet, because he kept prophesying terrible things, that was against the flow, against the grain, and that's how you, you could tell it was from God, it wasn't, you know, COVID's going to end soon. <laughs> right. I just think- You're going to pay a bill. I just think it's an oh, amazing thing. That's amazing. Okay. I just think it's an amazing thing, though, like, that they have the words of God. Like, how cool mm-hmm. must that have been? Like, for Isaiah, like, let's just take everything else out. Like, when Isaiah gets this and he is able to, like, prophesy, or Agabus is going to Paul and being like, thus says the Holy Spirit, like, or, or Ananias is having a vision and talking to God, who's saying, go to Saul, and, and... They're having a back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, go to Saul. And he's like, God... You're like, Lord, I know how, what damage he's done to your people. And he's like, yep, well, I'm going to use him to take it to the ends of the earth. Like, how cool is that? Like, like, I would like to think that you could recognize that more than like, hey, I had a really weird dream today about mm. pigs flying. Mm. And so I was thinking about making some bacon for dinner. Mm. Like, I just see that a as like... A little crass example, but yeah, yeah. we get it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, essentially, <laughs> yeah. essentially, yeah. our position is that we it's believe in soul scripture. And that Christians are to live by every word mm. that proceeds from the mouth of God. This is something we would love to have answered by the continuationist view, especially of the continuity view, but even of the discontinuity view, it really is sure. for either. Um, that they can answer why these other words of God, once proven that they are words of God. I mean, if you're just saying you can never prove that it's a word of God, then this whole thing is irrelevant to me because it's like, well, all right, it's all happening, but we can never know. Well, then it's irrelevant to me. I, I never know. Right. Um, it's definitely not the same as Isaiah. Again. Yeah. So if you're claiming that there are other words of God outside of the scriptures, how are they not something that Christians are to live by because they are included in every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? Mm-hmm. The only words preserved that we have left are found in the pages of scripture is what our position is mm-hmm. so if somebody had to say well i don't know about jamie actually but if somebody had to say like what form of cessationism you're defining that would be it is mm-hmm. that there's no other words of god outside of the scriptures that we know of right mm-hmm. that we have in our possession today um if there are more words of god out there outside of scripture we should also live by these words of god mm-hmm. and would then need to instead believe in soul scriptura plus these other words of God. It would just dramatic, dramatically define, uh, or sorry, have to redefine what we mean by soul of scripture mm-hmm. because there are other Which I think we would all say we're totally fine with. It's not like we're wedded to soul of scripture. We want to yes. know what God's word is. That's right. every one of the reformers would say that. Right. Give me these words of God. The whole point with Rome is that they said they had words of God and they're wrong. They, they weren't actually words of God that they had. If they did, then they would be right. 
it's not like, well, we just have to go by scripture. To find these words of Jesus that we don't have in scripture, and they'll say, like, well, we don't really have any. We don't have Because it wasn't preserved for us. Right. Exactly. That's why we have to go by what is preserved, which is scripture. Right. If there's other words of God, we should gladly take them right. and add them to what we live by then. Like what you said. If that's really happening, it's really happening. Like, I don't have to hold the soul scripture just because no. it's like, oh, well... We have to reject these things that are happening if because uh, it might might ruin sola scriptura. Like, well, sola scriptura is only there if it's true, you know. If right. It, right. If, if there's other words, though, right? Like, let's go. Yeah. All right. So, just to recap, how would you remnant answer these questions? Are prophecies today included in the every word that proceeds from the mouth of God that we are to live by? Two. What makes something scripture versus not scripture? Seems to imply that the canonization of it makes it scripture, mm -hmm. as opposed to the nature mm -hmm. of the writings themselves. Amen. Number three, is the Testament of Simeon God-breathed revelation words from God? And if so, how is that not the same ontologically as the scriptures? In other words, we would still have to live by it, that even, if it's, not added, even by if it's not added to the canon. Right. And number four, why have prophecies regarding theological positions ceased? <laughs> and number five, what is the reason that scripture writing mm. has ceased? I'm glad we got to that too. Um, because we all believe the canon is closed, but why? Why? For us, we all believe it something is, ceased, in other words. Yeah, for us, it is, well, there's no other words of God mm -hmm. being recorded, so scripture writing has ceased. There are no more. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's, I mean, that, my, that's what closes it. Yeah. My, um, but if there, if there are more, um, I think you can still have it as scripture closing potentially in terms of the death of the last apostle. But it really muddies the question of like, so why do we have a closed canon if there's other words of God? Like why why wasn't there other written forms? Like now we got the Testament of Simeon coming in, and it's like we have these other mm -hmm. written things. Um, but that would just be yeah. a question for you. How would you define why right. scripture writing has ceased? Because mm -hmm. clearly something has ceased. Right. Um, and so for us, it's more like that God has ceased to speak outside of what he's already spoken mm -hmm. um, and how he acts and how he mm -hmm. um, works in, by the spirit. Again, like how he acts in heart mm -hmm. believers. Um, and it's not that he, he can't speak. He can. But then we would say we would add it to the scriptures that we have then and we would be totally fine with that or we would add it at least to what we live by and we would sure. have two position uh, two, two <laughs> yes. areas that we that would we go to that by. we would live by yes yeah. so we don't mind god speaking but we just want to know if he actually is what is it and then we can live by it just like we do with the scriptures right yeah this, well we definitely love the yeah. work that remnant radio is doing so we don't want this to seem Maybe like not. we yeah. really hate what you guys are doing um no you guys have had yeah. um like costi hin on and he's a um like more of a cessationist then you know and he they mm -hmm. they just they talk about it and when they're interviewing him the spirit of that mm. like and the atmosphere of that entire That's great. Mm -hmm. um <clears throat> discussion is so good mm -hmm. like i wish all of this <laughs> like, what I, the church should be doing yeah yes. it's like it really it's, is it's so good and and you can tell that like they, they st not step over each other but like you can tell it's like eh, he just said something that they don't agree on mm -hmm. and it's like you know but they're able to just keep like hey let's keep it productive yeah. and going and it's like and um yeah, it's really build each other up. It's really good. You know, um, let every mm -hmm. word be done to the edification mm -hmm. of someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Remnant does that. Um, you know, not just with um, you know the gifts, and uh, they do it with with a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I love listening to Remnant, even when I disagree with them. But because they have so many other people on the show, I get to learn about so many different, mm -hmm. like the Lutheran Amen. view of baptism. Yeah, you know, no it's kidding. like that's awesome. And then no they kidding. get some good pushback. Well, it's awesome that you so. can learn about it. I don't know. If it's awesome. Well, the the goal with with what they're doing, I, I think, and what what we want, what we're doing also is, is our, our goal is truth. We just want to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, like, I don't want to bring my presupposition mm -hmm. to the table, like to put all that stuff to the side and just, okay, w what is real? What is true? Mm -hmm. Let's get to that. And if I think if that's the, the argument, then you're, you're not defending your point of view. You're, you're really just looking for truth mm -hmm. you know so that that makes the, the conversation a lot a lot more um amenable yeah. you know agree right you know you tend yeah, to you're all looking for you know you just just wanting to grow and and grow together mm -hmm. with brothers and sisters in christ yeah. um 
and uh, and honor God and everything. So yeah. that's really really cool. That's great. So they're doing yeah, good, I th- good I think work. For me, just as a closing thought, too. Uh, this is for me is less for remnant and it's more for these terrible cessationist arguments because mm. if they did what, what we did, which I don't see them attacking the nature of the God breathe, that to me is like that's you're burying the lead <clears throat> when you talk about healing and all of these other things. So for me, it's more about like that's why that's why we're doing this is so that we can get those kind of answers on the that fundamental topic on the nature of those things. So it's more for the cessationism than even for remnant, because I think remnant, if they were taught that by, if they were told by other cessationists what we said, then they would already be able to respond to it. But they weren't, they haven't been challenged on that. I don't think so. So I, yeah, I want, haven't, I have not watched enough. So yeah, I really but. want to know what their answer is yeah. about. Yeah. They have other words of God. Yeah. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, right. that yeah. is what man lives by. Right. Not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from yeah. the mouth of God. Yeah. If I get that answer from them in a video, yeah, wonderful. All right, guys. Well, All thank right. you so much yeah. for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, definitely subscribe to Freedom Church and wherever you get your podcasts. Go on Freedom Church NJ so you can listen to all of our stuff. Uh, Thank you, Tim, for joining us. Remember that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.